My name is Peter Korkinos. I'm the director of the Human Performance and Research Unit at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Washington, D.C. The title of the article is Exercise Capacity and Risk of Chronic Kidney Disease in U.S. Veterans, a cohort study. It will be published in the April 2015 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. This is a prospective study designed to assess the association between cardiorespiratory fitness and the risk of developing chronic kidney disease or CKD. Our cohort consisted of 5,812 middle-aged male veterans from the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Washington, D.C. All participants were CKD free prior to entering the study. Cardiorespiratory fitness was assessed by a graded exercise test and peak metabolic equivalents, or METs, were determined. Accordingly, we established four age-adjusted fitness categories, least fit, low fit, moderate fit, and high fit, based on the quantiles of peak METs achieved. Multivariable Cox proportional hazard models were used to assess the exercise capacity CKD association. The models were adjusted for age, BMI, blood pressure, medications, cardiovascular disease, risk factors, race, and history of alcoholism. During a median follow-up period of 7.9 years, 1,000 individuals developed CKD. The CKD Fitness Association was independent, inverse, and graded. The CKD risk was 22% lower for every one met increase in exercise capacity. When considering fitness categories, CKD risk decreased progressively as fitness status increased. Specifically, when compared to the least fit, the risk of developing CKD was 13%, 45%, and 58% lower for individuals in the low fit, moderate, and high fit categories, respectively. The findings of this study support that higher aerobic fitness lowers the risk of developing CKD. The average exercise capacity necessary to realize these health benefits was just over 6.5 METs. This level of fitness is achievable by many middle-aged and older individuals by daily exercises such as brisk walking. Moderate intensity exercises are effective in improving aerobic fitness regardless of age or comorbidities. Thus, exercise interventions for individuals at risk for CKD and those with preclinical CKD may be implemented to prevent or at least attenuate the rate of developing CKD. Healthcare professionals should advise their patients to engage regularly in moderate intensity physical activities or structured exercise programs designed to improve aerobic fitness. Brisk walking is the safest, most effective, and inexpensive way to increase fitness and improve health. Individuals should start slowly, even as low as 10 minutes each day, and add one to two minutes to their sessions each week. The goal is to accumulate a total of 150 to 200 minutes of aerobic activity each week. This can be achieved by walking briskly four to six times per week, 30 to 40 minutes per session. It is important to emphasize that physical activity is associated with some risk of injury and even death, especially in sedentary individuals. However, the risk of physical inactivity is far greater than that of physical activity. To reduce this risk even more, all individuals must consult their physician prior to engaging in any exercise. Our next goal is to assess if exercise can reverse or at least attenuate the deterioration of kidney function in patients with CKD. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. 
Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.